Visco. Hi, welcome back to Visco YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you how to configure HeatVision Business System with Heat Central Professional HCP and the SK1T342 MFX. So here are the products that we are going to use today. First is our face terminal, K1T342 MFX. So it is an access control terminal that we commonly use for authenticate certain person to enter a certain entity. So it has a few authentication method. First is face, second is fingerprint, third is card, and lastly is the QR code. And next we are going to use a paid license software from HeatVision, which is HCP, High Central Professional, with the visitor module inside. And now I'm going to show how to set up and configure the HCP. Now I will show how to configure visitor management system in High Central Professional HCP. First, log into your HCP account. Make sure your HCP account come with the visitor module license. Before we dive into the visitor module, we have to do the configuration for the device and access control. First, go to device, access control device, add an access control device that you are going to use for the visitor. Key in the device IP address. Device port default is 8000 and key in the device name. Key in the device password and the time zone and resource information setting. We can follow the default. Click add. Make sure the device is online. Then go to access control, access level and manage access level. Add an access level for visitor. Key in the access level name and then select the 342 that I added just now and make sure it is moved to the right side. The access schedule, I choose all day template and then click add. Now we can go to the visitor module. So this is the visitor module in HCP. As you can see, the main page is the overview of visitor information. Now we need to set the access level for visitor. Go to basic configuration, access level, click add. Select the access level that we created just now and click add again. Now the visitor access is the access level that we set for visitor. We can have different visitor access level for different type of visitor. In this case, I'll just use one. Now, I'll show the whole process of the visitor registration, starting from the reservation, approval, check-in, and accessing the entity. For visitor reservation, there are two methods to reserve the visitor. The first method is manual reservation. This can be done by the security guard or the staff at the receptionist area. Go to the Visitor Reservation tab, click the Reserve button, and key in the information for the visitor, their name. If the visitor is registered in the system before, you can actually click the Select button and select back the same visitor. Then, their information will be autofilled. So this will be very useful for the use case such as office, residential area, or gym, which have a very frequent visitor revisit, and instead of keying in their information every time, you can actually save a lot of time. Then you can select the host, the person that they are going to meet with, and their visit purpose. So these are the default visit purpose, and you can actually add more different type of visit purpose. Their estimated entry lead time, which is their valid period, their visitor group. For now, only have one visitor group, but you can actually have different visitor group, and different visitor group can be set to have different access level. Email address and their phone number. 
their ID information, either ID card, passport, or driving license. Their gender, and this license plate north, organization, country, and region, and remark are for the ANPR enter and exit purpose. You can fill in if needed. So lastly, for the access information, click the configured, then select the access level that we assign for visitor and click add. Then click reserve. So now the visitor is reserved and pending approval. The second method for visitor reservation is through self-reservation. You can go to basic configuration, review and self-service reservation, and then turn on the self-reservation. Then you can send this QR code to the visitor so that they can do the self-reservation. Once they scan the QR code, they will be accessed to a form where they can fill in their information. Please take note that the visitors are required to be under the same network as this HCP server so that they can access to the form. If you want the visitors to register a few days ago or at other places different from the network, it is suggested to do DDNS for this QR code link. Now, I'll demo on the scanning the QR code and do the self-reservation. Now to the approval step. You can do this in the visitor reservation tab. You can approve or reject the visitors under operation. Once the visitor is approved, QR code and reservation code will be generated. You can also set auto approval so that the visitors will be auto approved and this step will not be required. An email will be sent to the visitor and the host to notify them with the reservation code after they are approved or rejected. The QR code will be used to access the K1T342MFX if check-in does not require. If check-in is required, then the QR code cannot be used, but the reservation code will be needed for check-in. Now, we go to the check-in tab. If you want to skip the approval step, you can turn on the auto approve reservation and click save. Then, once you've done your self-service reservation, you will directly get the credential like the reservation code through email for check-in purpose. And if you turn off the check-in, you will directly get the QR code to access the K1T342. You can turn off the check-in through the basic parameters, visitor reservation, and tick the check-in not required and save. The third step will be check-in. The purpose of check-in is for visitor to show themselves at the receptionist area or guard house for physical approval to make sure that the person that check-in is same as the person that reserve. So go to the reserve visitor check-in tab. The visitor is required to give the guard or the staff their credential such as reservation code, phone or ID number to check in and then the guard or the staff will be required to key in the selected credential. Then this visitor is checked in. Once checked in, a new QR code will be generated Then this QR code can be used to access the face terminal. So now I'm going to demo about the visitor access 
through K1T342 using the QR code. So this is the QR code that generated from the hash CP just now. So on the K1T342, just press the QR scanner, then scan the QR code. Thank you. Then the visitor information will be displayed and the visitor can access through the entity. You can have the visitor access record over here and check which visitor has accessed before and filter by date. So that's all for this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Bye. Visco.